is also a decade of explosive growth for the area. Yeah, and in Las Vegas, there's only one way to make room for a new <laughs> hotel, and it's blow up the old one. <laughs> Sherry Swens looks at something in the 90s almost as exciting as the running rebels, implosions. As shiny new hotel casinos sprang up along the Strip, visionaries out west of town were hoping to hit the jackpot in this vast area of open desert. I remember that the governor cut the ribbon on the Summerlin Parkway overpass. And I remember that every one of the reporters who were doing the live shots all said the same thing. Well, the road to nowhere is open. All of this nothingness would become home to over 100,000 residents in the state's largest master plan community called Summerlin, named after the grandmother of Howard Hughes, who purchased 25,000 acres of desert back in the 1950s. He died in the 70s. His heirs sold the first home in 1991. Back in town, progress showed no mercy. In 1995, the old landmark hotel casino near the Las Vegas Convention Center came crashing down to create more parking spaces for conventioneers. The fall of the spacey looking tower was captured on film by Hollywood producer Tim Burton and used in the cult movie classic Mars Attacks. Another attack near the Las Vegas Strip in the 90s killed a popular hip-hop artist named Tupac Shakur. 25-year-old Shakur was shot in his car while sitting at a red light at Flamingo and Koval on the night of September 7, 1996. He died at UMC six days later. The suspicious death of gaming executive Ted Binion in 1998 involved drugs, buried silver, and a love triangle. His live-in girlfriend Sandy Murphy and her secret lover Rick Tabish were charged with his murder and the televised proceedings became the murder trial of the century. The two were found guilty, but the verdict was overturned on an appeal. They were retried and acquitted of murder, but convicted of trying to steal Binion's fortune. They are both out of prison. And we all know what Summerlin looks like today.